What makes a great talent? What breaks it? What really sets it apart? And what's there for us to learn? Let's find out with an extraordinary example from the guitar world. Today, there are so many young prodigies, it's almost too much. Some of these kids outperform even seasoned professionals. Not all of them make a career out of it, and that's okay. To see Tina S. come back after a seven-year break, that's still a big deal. She was just a teenager from a Paris suburb, and still she played with the soul of a seasoned shredder. Incroyable. That sounds really familiar to classical guitarists. Just a short drive from Tina's home, exactly one century ago, one of the most phenomenal guitar prodigies of all time was born. The legendary Ida Presti. While the name Ida Presti will still ring a bell for many, her actual legacy is way less known. Unlike with other greats of the 20th century, most really don't engage with her work that often anymore, which is a huge shame. She is generally regarded as one of the most skilled players ever. Her career was skyrocketing, and she was admired all over the world. So, what changed? Her surprising early death is one of the greatest tragedies in the history of classical guitar. Her influence was already incredible. Unimaginable what could have been if she'd only lived longer. Ida Presti was far ahead of most of her peers. Long before flawless playing was common, she was an incredibly advanced musician that had complete control over her instrument. Early in her career, she earned the nickname Presti Prestissimo, partly as a compliment and partly as a criticism for how fast she could play. In fact, many stories about her are these tales of physical prowess, like her infamous ability to fret four E's at once. Ouch. When we talk about why a musician is great, we want clear, undeniable proof. But there's a risk here, because all those technical skills mean nothing if they're not used in the service of expression. And that's a lot more difficult to put into words. Ida Presti's true strength was in her endless, untethered musicality. Understanding this fully requires time, focus and effort. We're gonna have a listen. If you like these videos, please consider subscribing and giving us a thumbs up. So. What's the deal with Ida Presti? First off, she was an incredible child prodigy. Her father, Claude Montagnon, closely guided her early steps. He was an amateur accordionist with huge ambitions for his daughter. Her day-to-day -day life was managed meticulously and he made sure she would never miss a chance to learn something. The craziest part? Even though Montagnon couldn't play the guitar at all, he somehow taught himself all about teaching it. Together they devoured lots of scores, method books and recordings that young Ida would then imitate. And amazingly this actually worked. Even though she did only sometimes get lessons from professional teachers, her playing reached masterful levels in record time. She started giving recitals at primary school age and her talent was quickly noticed by the music scene in Paris. Listen to this recording when she was 13. Back then this would have been completely unheard of from such a young player. About a year later, her father passed away suddenly. This was a major disruption that left the family adrift and impoverished. It happened at the worst possible time. The war was looming ahead. Presti's days as a childhood sensation were over. It took almost 10 years for her to fully bounce back. But once she did, nothing could stop her. Presti's early career repertoire was nothing unusual for the time. A mix of historic and neo-romantic compositions, both originals and transcriptions. Unfortunately, not all of it ended up being recorded. Her solo catalogue is woefully short. But the recordings we do have are just pure sonic bliss. If you enjoy old recordings, the rich and mellow sound of the likes of Segovia, the heavy use of vibrato and rubato, the deeply indulgent romantic style of early 20th century players, then Ida Presti's recordings will be even better for you. The sounds just seem to melt from her guitar. But even that is not really her defining quality. If I were asked to reduce it to one thing, 
It's that more than almost anybody else, Ida Presti knew how to always keep things interesting and engaging. She'd probably do great in our modern age of short attention spans. Her contrasts, tone color, dynamics and articulation were absolutely masterful. Her groove was incessant and the phrasing surprising and complex. Things really seemed to come easy for her. She was able to take huge expressive risks without her performances falling apart. It's really these qualities that made her stand out. In 1951, Ida Presti met Alexandre Lagoya, her future husband. Her career was moving faster than ever, but astonishingly she suddenly decided to stop playing solo concerts. Instead, she focused her energy entirely on playing with Lagoya. That was a momentous decision. They didn't know it yet, but the Presti Lagoya duo would soon become one of the greatest guitar projects of all time. Every now and then I hear the argument that it's hard to truly evaluate Ida Presti's skills because she didn't make enough solo recordings. The implication is that the duo music doesn't count, after all it's less of a challenge really. This could not be further from the truth. To some eternal soloists this might be a bit tough to hear, but chamber music is not taking the easy way out actually is one of the smartest moves we could ever make. Adding a second guitar lifts many restrictions, opens up entirely new possibilities and massively expands what you can express in your music. Of course, there are major obstacles before you can unlock these benefits. To play well together, musicians must be able to think beyond themselves, but musical minds don't always intertwine without friction. This is a world where compromise and negotiation don't really make sense, but a rigid hierarchy does neither. The best results arise when we're completely in sync with each other. Coming from everyday life, this is an alien concept to some people. But when it works out, the result is a lot more than the sum of its parts, and honestly it can feel like pure magic. There actually is research into how things like heartbeat and brainwave patterns can precisely synchronize in a well-rehearsed group of musicians. Presti and Lagoya were among the first to really dive deep into the world of dedicated guitar duos. He was a very skilled and hard-working guitarist with a similarly unique background to hers and they immediately clicked musically. Guitars have a percussive attack, the sound starts pretty much immediately. Getting that in sync is really difficult, but they managed it from the start. The best qualities of Presti's solo playing carried over into their duel. Their sound was just incredibly indulgent, it was varied and contrasting, and they always played with invention and surprise. Over the next 15 years, the duo played thousands of concerts and recorded a lot of music. They inspired some of the absolute peaks of guitar literature, like Mario Castelnuovo Tedesco's Well-Tempered Guitars and Joaquin Rodrigo's Tonadilla. If you haven't heard these, I really recommend listening to them. In 1966, Rodrigo went even further. He finished one of his defining works, the now famous Madrigal Concerto, and he again dedicated it to the duo. They were supposed to play the grand premiere the next year, but it never happened. While on tour in the United States, Ida Presti suddenly became very ill. Doctors couldn't figure out why, and on April 24, 1967, she died from internal bleeding caused by a lung tumor. Nobody expected that. She was only 42 years old. The guitar world was in complete shock. And we're still feeling it today. Ida Presti's death didn't just abruptly end a project that had produced groundbreaking performances and inspired incredible compositions. In the last few years of her life, Presti also started focusing more on composing and teaching. These were areas where she clearly had a lot to offer too. And lately her compositions are being performed and recorded more frequently, which is great news. Her music matches her playing style. It was more important for her to keep things interesting in the moment rather than sticking to rigid formal structures. If you're unsure what to think about that, I think it's a good thing. It's good to be interesting. 
She often started her ideas from an improvisation. She's really good at finding these otherworldly moods. She achieves that by keeping to a tonal center that's tastefully colored by chromatic extensions. Unfortunately, there's not many interpretational remarks in her sheet music. This makes it hard for us nowadays to know exactly how she wanted her music to be played. She would have performed it with the same complex intuition she had for other repertoire. But sadly, she only recorded a few of her own compositions. Both Presti and La Goya had a peculiar right hand technique. Just a few words on this. Alice Arzt, a student of Presti, has explained this in great detail in her video series, which is still relevant 15 years later. Similar to Tariga or Emilio Pujol, Ida Presti would play with a bend in her wrist. However, unlike them, she played with fingernails, so she tilted her hand to strike the string with the right side of the nail. This differs from the more common modern technique where the wrist is mostly straight and the string is struck with the left side of the nail. For many guitarists, Presti's position happens naturally if you let your hand relax. This can allow for greater speed and accuracy. It also helps with these infamous cross-string trills that Presti and Lagoya used all of the time. But of course, what works for one person might not work for everyone. The point of learning a technique is to eventually not have to think about it too much. We don't want to replace one dogma with another one. What we really want is to expand the possibilities of expression. This is actually exactly what Presti Lagoya and their students are doing. Like Olivier Chassin and also his student Thibaut Garcia, along with many other modern players who aren't even from this tradition. The ideal wrist is free and flexible, and the angle is always changeable to suit specific techniques, articulations and tone colors. Let's circle back to the original question. What is talent really? We've established that Ida Presti definitely had it. She was faster, more intuitive, more driven than anyone else. But where did this really come from? This is an impossible riddle and it always turns into a debate of nature versus nurture. It's obviously both. The disagreement is really just about which matters to what extent. But here's the issue. We can only talk about someone being talented after they've shown great skill, which makes the term not very useful in teaching. To people that fail to get labeled as talented, there's really only misery in using the word. Talent or not, if you want to learn an instrument, the aim should be to reach your individual potential. Sorry if this seems like a cop-out, but the answer is really that the question is lacking. Talent is either something really obvious or it means whatever you want it to mean, and then is mostly synonymous with saying, I like this. There's also the sneaky issue that to some extent it's a self-fulfilling prophecy to call someone talented or untalented. Aha! So it's nurture after all. Also, I think not in the way you would expect. Ida Presti once said she had no childhood and some think this proves she only excelled because of a cruel draconian upbringing. I find that highly unlikely. If Claude Montagnol really had to force his daughter into action, then she succeeded despite the cruelty, not because of it. To truly excel at something like playing an instrument, we need environments that support and motivate us consistently over a very long time. This is really what discipline means, and it has nothing to do with cruelty or suffering. Even now, some teachers believe in a twisted version of no pain, no gain. This is super harmful, and there are always better ways to achieve results. Ultimately, the whole debate about talent and nature versus nurture is just a distraction. It doesn't really help us become better musicians, which is, let's be honest, probably the reason why you're watching a tone base video. In the best case, we call someone talented out of admiration, to aspire to a quality they possess. But then we should really be more specific. There are many practical lessons we can learn from Ida Presti that will help us improve quickly. Just a few. First, invent your own technical exercises. Ida Presti was known as a quick-thinking and adaptable teacher who could easily tailor exercises to a student's specific needs. Often, ready-made exercises don't really address the exact issues that we're facing. So designing exercises that specifically target our challenges is not only effective training in itself, but also more likely to solve our problems. Second, it's okay to imitate somebody when you're learning. Presti's early training involved listening to many recordings and trying to copy their sound. And this isn't cheating, it's just a fast way to improve. In the jazz world, this is absolutely the standard. It's absolutely necessary there. It helps train our ears and it allows us to absorb the musical intent of more experienced players, which can be very insightful. And now we know with platforms like YouTube, this is even easier to do. Third, and this is a big one, don't forget about chamber music. As soon as you're able to play even the simplest solo pieces, it's seriously one of the most rewarding experiences that you can have. 
Playing with others addresses so many fundamental issues that most students have, such as, you know, um, motivation, attention, consistency, rhythm, sight reading, and also phrasing. It boosts many aspects of musicianship and it also makes you a better solo player. Ida Presti and Alexandra Lagoya stuck to their duo, and for good reason. During their time together, they inspired so many others to follow suit. Today, there are lots of brilliant dedicated guitar duos who keep expanding the repertoire. Ida Presti, in particular, inspired many young women to start playing the guitar. She really boosted the return of women into the professional guitar world, which was rather patriarchal for a long time. This change is ongoing and continues to influence new generations. For instance, the young Tina S was inspired to start playing after hearing another modern legend, Anna Vidovich. Let's keep playing. Big shout out to Stephanie. Thanks for helping me with this video. I've put lots of links into the description for you to dive deeper into this topic. Take your time to listen to the music, no words necessary. The video was made possible with the support of Tonebase. Check out Tonebase Premium for access to an incredible collection of knowledge about all things classical guitar. Many of the world's greatest artists have contributed to the ever-growing catalogue and it's only getting better and better. Check it out now with a free two-week trial. Links in the video description. Let us know in the comment what you think about Ida Presti in this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I'm Jakob Schmidt for Tonebase. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.